Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm gonna show you how to spawn and despawn objects in Altaruna. I'm gonna do so with this little simple cute building system placement thing. Before we get too far into this video, it is sponsored by Altaruna, however they have not forced me to say anything, so big thanks to the Altaruna team for this opportunity. So we're just starting out with the same test scene as the other Altaruna tutorials. Now I've gone ahead and already set up a test cube, this is literally just a cube with a material that does nothing else. The important part is that it is on a new layer that I made called cube and this will come in important later when we look at these. Now first things first, I also have the base player set up already. So let's go make a script for him. I'm gonna call the script cube spawner and let's open up the script. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all the things that we have here already. And the first things first is we need a reference to our avatar. Now the script is going to be on the same object, so I'm just going to write out to runa.avatar and call it underscore avatar. And then in the awake function, we can grow and grab this. Just like so. Now the next thing that's really important is on the scene setup, Alteruno uses a spawner component to actually keep track of spawning. So on the network manager, I've gone ahead and I've set in a spawner. You can just do so by clicking add component and add the spawner from Alteruna. Now this spawner has a list of spawnable objects here which is where you would go ahead and drop in whatever you want to spawn. Now I've gone ahead and dropped in my test cube. I can show you again just like so. I drag and drop the test cube onto here and boom it's added to the list. And you can delete on the minus button down here. Now one thing that's important to note is that lists start from element zero. It also says right here. So element zero right now is the test cube and this will come in important as well. Now going back to the script we need a reference to this spawner. So let's do a private spawner and this requires us to use the Alteruna namespace and I'm gonna call it underscore spawner. Now the way that we get this spawner is by grabbing the network manager. So I've gone ahead and made a new tag for the network manager that is just called network manager and it is on this network manager that we have the spawner script. So going in here the way that we can find the spawner is by going game object dot find game object tag and the tag then was network manager dot get component and then the spawner. Now that we've found both these components, let's open up the update loop. Now, first things first, we wanna check if we are the owner of this object, which means are we the owner of this player? And if we are not the owner of this player, which I turn around using this exclamation mark, we return out of the function. Now we can go ahead and spawn it. So first things first, I wanna spawn by the input of a key. So I'm gonna say input.getKey down, key code, and then in my case, I'm just gonna use F. And here I'm gonna run a spawn cube function. Now we haven't made this yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Now this is actually very simple. All we need to do is to underscore spawner dot spawn. And then we need to pass in what to spawn and where to spawn it, the rotation of which to spawn it and the scale. Now you don't have to fill out all of these, but we're gonna do that in this case. So let me make a new serialized field, which is gonna be a private int, and that's gonna be the index to spawn. Now you remember where our little cube was zero in the elements list, this is where that comes in handy. So index to spawn, we're gonna input down here, which means now we are spawning the cube because it's zero. Now the position of this is just gonna be at the camera.main.transform.position, because in my case, camera.main is the camera on my player. And I wanna spawn it in front of the camera. So I'm gonna say plus camera.main.transform.position. And let me add a little bit of distance to this. So I'm gonna times that by 1.5 or multiply. Now the rotation, I just want to match the camera as well. This could also be quaternion.identity if you don't want any rotation on it. And let's scale down the cube a bit because right now it's just one unit. So let's scale that down, which we do by making a new vector three. And we're just gonna say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, like so, there we go. And this should just work. So now let's just go test that out. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves on the player, we of course need to add the cube spawner script. So let's go and do that. And now here we can see the index to spawn is set to zero. Let's go ahead and test it. Okay, so I just noticed a flaw that I made is I wrote position twice. Of course, I meant to do transform.forward in here. So transform.position plus transform.forward. Let's go test it again. And as you can see, now we're placing cubes in front of us and these are spawning as they should. 
Now we're gonna test this multiplayer later, but first of all, let's just get the despawning in there as well. So now let's do the same that we did with the input up here, but instead let's change the button to something like Q to despawn. And then I'm gonna say despawn Q. And let's make this function. Now in here, I want to shoot out a ray cast, and this is where the layer mask comes in handy. So let's do a new serialized field, which is gonna be a private layer mask that we're gonna call the spawn layer. Now we're gonna make an if statement and say physics.raycast. If you're not familiar with raycasts, I could really recommend you reading up on these because they are very, very useful and you're gonna be using them again in the future. So we are gonna be raycasting from camera.main.transform.position. This is once again, my camera's position. And I want to raycast in the direction of the way my camera is facing, which is camera.main.transform.forward. Now we're going to output a raycast hit that we're just going to call hit. We're just going to shoot it for infinity. I don't need a limited distance on the despawning. And we want to be using the despawn layer. Now we can open up this if statement. And in here we can just do underscore spawner dot despawn and then the hit dot transform dot game object. And it's as easy as that. Now it despawns the cube. Now let's go test this out properly, shall we? Now before we get too far, of course we need to go set the layer on the player to the layer of cube, and let's build it. Now that both my instances are here, you can see I can place cubes and they can see it, and I can also remove cubes and that works too, like so. And I have personally found this surprisingly fun to play around with, I think you can create some really funny things just by this simple spawning mechanic. I just made a little face. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. Here you go. I really hope that you learned something and after all, please do like, comment and subscribe. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.